Jedi Squadron is a podcast run by the Anime Secrets website. Check us out at AnimeSecrets.org for more anime, video game, tokusatsu, and now Star Wars content. Remember to follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts today. Hello, new Padawans, and welcome to the Jedi Squadron podcast. Here, you will be taking lessons in the many pieces of the Star Wars universe, whether it be the movies, animated series, video games, comics, and etc. This is your training into becoming a Star Wars fan as part of the Jedi Squadron. May your training go well, and may the Force be with you, young Padawans. What is going on, Star Wars Nation? This is the Jedi Squadron Podcast, presented by AnimeSecrets.org, and I'm your host, Nathan Nassa, and today I'm here by myself to give a uh, just a very quick reaction to the uh, new Season 3 trailer for uh, Bad Batch that just uh, was released earlier this week. Uh, you know, I was really excited when it was announced that uh, Bad Batch was going to get a Season 3 uh, and I'm really excited now that I've seen this trailer. Now, uh, just a quick thing. For those who are wondering why it's only me and not Riz, well, Riz has not uh, finished Seasons 1 and 2 of The Bad Batch. Uh, so, you know, he doesn't want to watch that trailer, uh, you know, because he doesn't want to get any spoilers, which can't blame him because there is a very major spoiler, uh, in, you know, in that trailer that, uh, you know, at the end of season two. So really can't blame him for that. <laughs> and I'm not going to mention that here because he's going to have to listen to this when he edits it. So, um, yeah, not going to spoil that. But, uh, but uh, with that being said, uh, you know, I have watched both seasons of the bad batch and, uh, they kind of give a bit of a preview on, uh, what my thoughts are on both those. Um, you know, a preview without going into too much detail, uh, you know, because Riz and I are going to be reviewing the other seasons of the bad batch. Uh, the Bad Batch is, um, you know, kind of a, you know, it it's good in my opinion. Uh, in my, um, you know, I feel like when the show is really good, it's really good. Like it's awesome. It's like it has some of my fav genuine favorite moments in Star Wars animated content. Um, that being said, I do get the criticisms that, you know, there's a lot of filler episodes and, you know, the filler episodes can be very formulaic, uh, you know, so I kind of understand that. But when it does hit on the deep stuff, like, you know, namely the whole, you know, story behind, you know, the clones being phased out, you know, now that the clone wars are over and, you know, all that, like when it hits that deep stuff, it it is some of the best content ever. Like, I would probably say that some of those episodes are better than, like, you know, almost the entirety of the stuff that we get in Clone Wars Season 1. Uh, you know, like, so this, is, so this is a show that, at the end of the day, does deserve to exist. It's still great when it's great. When the filler episodes are there, it's, nah, I mean, I could, I could take it or leave it, but at the same time, I mean, it's not, you know... It's not horrible, in my opinion. So, yeah, I do like both those seasons. And I'll go into more detail when uh, Riz and I um, review those uh, two seasons. But with that being said, uh, you know, as far as this season three trailer is concerned, uh, well, uh, I I really enjoyed it. And one thing I want to say right from the starting gate, uh, you know, there's the opening scene where, um, where uh, Wrecker and uh, Hunter... And if you look very closely, you can actually see Crosshair in the, you know, behind him, which is interesting because, you know, most people should know, uh, Riz probably knows this since he's seen early see season one of a Bad Batch, but uh, Crosshair is not supposed to be working with the Bad Batch. So to see Crosshair there, and it could be someone just wearing Crosshair's armor, but it's there, but just wanted to get that detail out of there. They're being chased by an LAAT uh, gunship, and they're driving a clone turbo tank. I, I got, I actually had a massive fanboy moment when I saw the uh, clone turbo tank because I had that uh, Lego toy when I was a kid. I really loved the clone turbo tank. You know, I, you know, I loved playing with it. The Lego version when I was a kid, it was one of my, uh, you know, favorite vehicles. I loved seeing it. You know, during the Battle of Kashyyyk and Revenge of the Sith. I was really disappointed that it was never a vehicle that you could operate in Star Wars Battlefront 2. That was the game, the the 
one that came out in like 2005 when I was a kid. Really disappointed that we didn't get to use that. And I was also disappointed that we never got to see that vehicle used in uh, in uh, the Clone Wars. So I, I'm be, you know, totally hyped to finally see that. Kind of cutting it a little late since, you know, the Clone Wars are over. But hey, I mean, better late than never. <laughs> you know, it, you know, it's got a lot of awesome action. Um, you know, uh, but I think the big thing that I'm kind of taking away with this um, season is that I feel like, and, you know, um, you know, especially with like, you know, some of the dialogue that Rex speaks about how, you know, the war being over should have meant, you know, the end of the deaths of all their brothers, you know, the clones, and it didn't happen. I have a feeling that like, this is going to be the season that, especially given, you know, all the hype and the music that they're putting behind it with, uh, you know, um, you know, like one last season or like one last adventure or something like that. I have a feeling that this season is going to wrap up the entire, you know, just clone era of the galaxy. And I mean, in a way, it's already been wrapped up because you, you'll know that clones have basically been kind of eliminated largely, uh, you know, by the end of season one. Again, I'm not going to spoil how that ends because I don't want to you know, spoil much with Riz, but like, we do know that clones are being phased out, and I have a feeling that they're really building up for something insanely tragic to happen, because here's the thing that, you know, a lot of people need to know, and if you've seen, and if you know how season two ends, you're going to have to know the, uh, you know, unfortunate tragedy about this uh, show. The only person who's, I mean, and he's not even a regular character, he's just kind of recurring, but the only person that we know is going to survive who's a main character is Rex because Rex has to survive because, you know, he's a, he later goes on to be a main character in Rebels. But as far as the other characters go, I mean, we cannot be guaranteed that Hunter, Omega, Wrecker, you know, and the other members of the Red Bad Batch, we cannot be confirmed that they are going to survive. And I have a feeling that, you know, this season, especially with, you know, some of the, uh, you know, especially just with, like, how much of the epicness they're giving to this trailer with just, you know, pushing the idea that, like, this is, like, one last time. I really have a feeling that there's no way that this season can end other than a completely, tra other than on a completely tragic note. And I'm really looking forward to it. And honestly, I, I think one of the big things that's really symbolizing that, you know, this really is kind of just bringing finality to, because, because, I know that I'm kind of going all over the place here, but, you know, one can kind of view the Bad Batch as being a sequel to the Clone Wars, you know, and I know that Rebels was meant to kind of be a sequel, but the Bad Batch is a direct sequel. It is a direct spinoff, you know, because the Bad Batch were established as, you know, characters in, you know, a, like a two or three episode arc. I can't remember how many episodes, but in the uh, last season of Clone Wars, and then, you know, they bring these characters in and, you know, we've brought back, you know, a handful of, you know, Clone Wars characters like, uh, you know, Cad Bane is in season one. Uh, you know, we've gotten, uh, you know, Rex has come back. Cody came back at one point, um, you know, so I have a feeling that like this is just kind of a, you know, bringing finality to a lot of the characters whose stories are still kind of open ended uh, you know, just kind of bringing them some closure because, you know, spoiler alert, you know, if most people have seen this trailer, but like, you know, we we're seeing a lot of characters, you know, uh, here that we really haven't seen. Like, you know, we're bringing Cad Bane back. Now, to be fair, I don't, I don't know what they can do with Cad Bane that much because, you know, he, you know, Cad Bane was in Book of Boba Fett and, you know, so he has to survive I, I'm cool with them bringing Cad Bane back, although this kind of makes me wish that they didn't have him in Book of Boba Fett now because, you know, I feel like this would have been a much more epic way to, like, end his story because, I don't know, he, he just seemed really forced in appearing in Book of Boba Fett, but that's a different podcast for another time. Uh, we actually see uh, Commander Wolf uh, at one point. Uh, he still appears to be working for the Empire, I'm really curious to see, you know, where they go with Wolf, uh, because for those of you who don't know, Wolf is one of the uh, other two clones that's accompanied Rex uh, while in Rebels. 
I'm really curious to see, you know, what they do with Wolf because when you see him in Rebels, you get the idea that he never commit executed Order 66. But here I feel like we're going to get more of a story behind him, you know, hopefully, you know, both him and Cody for that matter because, you know, Cody, you know, has like one episode in season two that where we give him a lot of development. I'm kind of hoping that, you know, we get some closure for Cody's story, but we also get a lot of clarity on like what happened to Gregor. No, 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 not Gregor. Uh, Wolf, uh, you know, while, you know, in between the execution of order 66 and like what led him to eventually, you know, getting his uh, inhibitor chip removed, you know, so that he can, you know, line up to where he is in rebels. Really looking forward to that. I'm glad that they're bringing Wolf in. I, I don't think I saw Cody in this trailer, and I'm really hoping that they bring Cody back because he only appeared in one episode of season two. And it was a really damn good episode. I love that episode. It's one of my favorite episodes of any Star Wars animated content ever. Really hoping we give some closure with him because Cody is one of my favorite characters. And honestly, he became even a, you know, a much more favorite character of mine after I saw him in season two. So, uh, yeah, I really hope they bring back Cody. And maybe Cody was in it and he just kind of slipped under my nose because my brain was kind of on autopilot when I first watched this trailer. But uh, yeah, so um, really looking forward to seeing Wolf. Uh, maybe we'll get to see Gregor too and get an explanation on how he survived that whole incident in that, uh, I can't remember the name of the planet, but it was during that uh, story arc with the Astro Droids in a, in a season five of Clone Wars. So uh, maybe we'll get an explanation on how Gregor survived. Um, and, uh, of course, we have to talk about the uh, elephant in the room, ladies and gentlemen. The one that's, you know, just kind of, you know, blown people's minds. It has everyone talking. Asajj Ventress is back. <laughs> you know, uh, Asajj Ventress, she appears here. Uh, you know, she, we see her, you know, wielding a yellow lightsaber, which that actually surprised Riz. It doesn't really surprise me. I can't remember the story entirely, but I do know that, uh, on the cover of the book Dark Disciple, she is seen wielding a yellow lightsaber, so that doesn't surprise me. But yeah, everyone is surprised. How is Asajj Ventress here? <laughs> you know, and there's been a lot of people, like, you know, I was talking, Riz and I were talking with some of our friends that we met at Ranger Stop and Pop uh, in the Instagram group chat. There's a lot of people who are speculating, well, maybe Dark Disciple just isn't considered canon anymore. Now, uh, now, I'm not going to go into detail about how Dark Disciple ends and everything, but let's just say that, you know, you, you could probably guess, like, the way that Dark Disciple ends, Asajj Ventress is not a character that you would think would be around anymore. Uh, Riz and I are going to review that at some point, but I'm not going to go into any, uh, you know, spoilers because he hasn't read the book yet. But, yeah, Asajj Ventress, totally mind-blown. But the big thing is, is that I'm really curious to see how they justify, you know, having her come back. Because here's the thing that people need to realize about Dark Disciple. Dark Disciple was a book based on, uh, you know, concept art and storyboards for episodes that were meant to be part of the Clone Wars. So for all we know, these are episodes that, you know, this is work of Dave Filoni, you know, like... It's like, you know, Dave Filoni had some work that he was prepared to do before Disney canceled the Clone Wars, and Dark Disciple was just kind of a way of adapting his work to a different medium. So it's not like, you know, someone else just wrote an entirely different story, you know, in a completely different style. Because even if you read Dark Disciple, you can tell that they that it was meant to be a bunch of Clone Wars episodes just with the way that it's written and everything. So I don't really, and not only that, but there's people at Lucasfilm have said that they are going to be taking Dark Disciple into mind. So Dark Disciple is canon. I'm just curious to see, you know, how they're going to, you know, go about bringing Asajj Ventress back. And there's been so many, much speculation, you know, uh, like all these Star Wars podcasters are talking about it, and I don't think I could do it justice. I'm just, you know, I'm really excited to see Asajj Ventress back. And for all we know, you know, they could, uh, you know, be trying to set the stage for like kind of softly adapting the Dark Disciple, you know, uh, 
the Dark Disciple series, like maybe in a flashback or, I mean, I don't know, like, but I'm really excited to see it. You know, I'm, and I'm glad that, you know, they do seem to be, they have acknowledged Dark Disciple. You know, I'm, I would be surprised if they didn't, since again, you know, Dark Disciple is based on the works of Dave Filoni. So yeah, it's a pretty weird decision to bring her back, but uh, I'm, I'm totally for it. Looking forward to seeing her come back. Uh, you know, really looking forward to see, you know, how they justify her coming back. And I just hope it's, I just hope it's handled really well. Uh, and that is about all. Um, I'm kind of disappointed with, uh, the fact that this is season three and, uh, we're not, uh, <laughs> you know, we're, I've been obsessed with this ever since I saw this idea on Instagram. Like, could we get some closure with Barra Sophie, please? <laughs> you know, I've been obsessing over the idea that like maybe Barra Sophie should come back as like, a as like an inquisitor or something like maybe like I really wish that they bring back uh you know Barra Sophie in this season uh that's just a you know personal thing of mine and who knows I mean maybe they'll bring out Barra Sophie you know in a you know re you know it's just a way to surprise us because I mean they never showed uh Anakin in the uh, trailers for Ahsoka so I mean I don't know I'm gonna cross my fingers but I'm not gonna you know, if they don't do it, I won't be disappointed. But yeah, that those are my overall takeaways from it. Uh, you know, I I really do hope that this series does, you know, lean more on giving us story because if this season does have a lot of does have like a handful of filler episodes, I I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna be a little disappointed. I mean, in the previous seasons, the filler episodes were fine, but with like how season two ended and how you know, there's, you know, and how like so much at, and with all the emphasis they're putting on with like showing new characters, I really don't see how they could have filler episodes, but so I'm really hoping for it. And if this season does really just kind of bring the, all I'm asking for is that if they really do intend to end the whole like clone story and the clone era of the Star Wars universe with this show, at least have it go out with a bang. That's all I'm requesting, you know, and that's all I'm going to say. Really looking forward to season three because, you know, I'm a fan of the Bad Batch. You know, I really like these characters. Really looking forward to seeing them go through one last hurrah. It, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Now, uh, just a bit of a disclaimer here. Uh, we don't really know when we're going to be able to put up the podcasts for the uh for the Bad Batch, because first of all, Riz needs to finish uh, seasons one and two before we do seasons three. Um, and not only that, but we have some issues coming up in our personal lives that might hold back our ability to podcast for a couple of months. But I can assure you that when we are able to podcast, we will get the, uh, you know, season three, we will get the seasons one, two, and three out. And then after that, we can uh, hopefully uh, transition to the uh to uh, doing the uh, Clone Wars and, you know, uh, the Clone Wars series and, you know, talking about some of the other Clone War, Wars legacy stories. So, yeah, that that's about it. That's about it. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, really looking forward to season three. It was a great trailer. It's got me hyped. It pretty much did its job. Now, uh, hopefully the season will be able to be just as good as the trailer. <laughs> With that said, uh, I thank you so much for uh, taking the time to listen to this podcast. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like this video and subscribe uh, to the channel. If you're not already subscribed, leave a comment down below uh, You know, with any commentary you have. If you're listening to this on Spotify or iTunes, we love you guys. Leave a review. You know, leave a you know rating out of five stars. And you can reach out to us at AnimeSecrets.org for... Uh, you know, um, any commentary you want to give us. You can also check out our other podcasts, the Animated Classified and Tokyo Secrets podcasts. Um, and uh, that is about it. Uh, once again, I thank you guys so much for taking the time to uh, check out, uh, to listen to my reaction. I'll see you guys next time, whether it be uh, Riz and I reviewing one of the original trilogy movies or me doing another one of my uh, novel reviews. But until that time, you guys stay safe. We love you and may the force be with you.